basically I saw this and I was like, perfect, because I have been thinking about reading this one, so... Hello my loves and thank you for joining me, it's Kirsten and today we're doing a December TBR, the last TBR of 2023. That feels absolutely crazy to say out loud, this year has gone so fast, but like November I am only going to be doing three rolls for the actual TBR game and then we'll go through my shelves, have a little rummage and choose all the books that I want to read in the month of December. I have really enjoyed having the last three months to be just relaxing, reading whatever I want to read and just chilling. It's, it's been great. From January, the TBR game will be back to normal. Now, if you have any prompts that you would like to see me fulfilling and having that added to the game, then put those in the comments below because the game, for those of you that don't know it, is very, very simple. I roll a six colored sided dice, which correlates to a little ghost that sits on top of some prompts. For each color that gets chosen, I have to fulfill the prompt with a bit obviously but I can't double up on the prompt normally if we roll the same color twice we do a re-roll but because we're only doing three there won't be any re-rolls in this game but like I say from January it will be back to normal so I think that's all of the intro bit let's choose a prompt and then get on with the rolls give this a bit of a shuffle and we'll go at the back a title with one word okay now that's all out of the way let's get to the first roll the first roll pink a bright cover. So the first prompt is a bright cover and for this one I'm actually going to get you to decide. I normally do this every month where I have a prompt that comes up and I choose two books for it that I can't choose between and honestly bright cover stumped me. I wasn't sure. I don't feel like I've got many bright covers that I feel like reading right now but I did find these two both because they've got a bright kind of like yellow colour going on. So let me know in the comments below which one you think I should read. First of all we have Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. This is a book that my brother got me for my birthday. It is a thriller and I'm really excited for this one to be honest. Beautiful Daisy on the cover. I love that. Bright yellow so it goes well with the prompt. Daisy Darker is arriving at her grandmother's house for her 80th birthday. It is Halloween and Sea Glass, the crumbling Cornish house perched upon its own tiny private island, is at one with the granite rocks it sits on. The Darker family haven't all been in the same place for over a decade and when the tide comes in, they'll be cut off from the rest of the world for eight hours. When the tide goes back out, nothing will ever be the same again because one of them is a killer. This sounds so good. Oh, I didn't know this took place on Halloween. I would have read it for Halloween. Oh my gosh. Okay, well that, that sounds really good. It also, it feels a bit like a Agatha Christie book. Is this the one that's been inspired by one of Agatha Christie books? I don't know the title, but I know I haven't read it, but that does sound... Is it? And then there were none. Sounds pretty good. I'm looking forward to this. Or we have a Dark Academia book, which is The Things We Do to Our Friends by Heather Darwent. And again, went for it because of this bright kind of greeny yellow writing. Very nice. And this does sound really good. Like I am really in the, th I think you can see the theme that we're going for. I'm in the mood for something darker, but let's actually read the synopsis on this. So it says, when I tried to write it all down, all our misdeeds, I couldn't bring myself to cobble together a fictional account where we were normal students who did normal things. We had known we were better than them from the start. Tabitha compared them to the fatty section around a pork chop, the bit you slice away to get to the meat. Looking back, I sometimes feel bad about what we had planned, what we did. But at the time, it was as unavoidable as getting wet when you go outside on a stormy night. This sounds really good. This one is set in Edinburgh. Yeah, we're following Claire who arrives at the University of Edinburgh with a secret and then she meets Tabitha. Tabitha is charismatic, beautiful and intimidatingly wealthy and Claire is soon sucked into her enigmatic circle of friends with their dizzying world of champagne on rooftops and summers in France. But obviously things go terribly wrong. So these are the two choices. We have one that's kind of like a remote island, someone becomes a killer and this one is a dark academia book where things get toxic and go wrong very quickly. Let me know in the comments below which one you think I should read for the month. I'm very excited for both. So yeah, this is a good start I feel. And with that, let's choose another prompt. Animal on the cover. I feel like I have a few books with that, but let's get to the second roll. Roll number two. That went too far, but that is an orange. 
A title with one word. This could take a bit of time. Okay, I lied. That did not take long at all. So title with one word. I have Penance by Eliza Clark. This is a book that I recently thrifted for one pound and I am very, very intrigued by it. I've said this every single time that I've talked about this book. This is an Eliza Clark book that I have high hopes for. I do have Boy Parts that's been on my TBR for absolutely ages at this point, but this really intrigues me. So we're following journalist Alec who has written a definitive account of a crime that took place nearly a decade ago where there was a 16 year old that was murdered and it's been like put together with accounts and everything but what if this isn't true what if that's not actually what happened and i'm really intrigued by that i think it's going to be a really good read so yeah i just i have high hopes i think this is going to be really good really intriguing to see what is going on and to find out the truth of what actually happened to this girl. I have heard a few people review it and say how it's really good and it kind of is a look into how vicious girls can be. I mean, I'm intrigued. I think it's going to be a good time and I feel like it's a good place to start to see if I like Eliza Clark's writing style to prepare myself for boy parts because that's a bit more of a chaotic supporting women's wrongs book, um, which I feel like is going to be good, but I don't know, I, I keep putting it off, um, but I feel like this is going to be a nice intro and a bit more of like what I sort of like from my books. I've heard nothing but good things about it. It sounds really good, so I think this is going to be the one for one word title because it literally is. Otherwise, other books that I've got either have the in front of it or things like that, but basically I saw this and I was like, perfect, because I have been thinking about reading this one, so that's what we're going with. This is a, a very colourful stack so far, but right, okay, time for the last roll and then we'll get into my shelves and pull off all the books that I want to read because I have loads that I want to get to, but you can definitely see the theme that I'm feeling like loads of people have been saying how they're really craving like fantasy books and I mean a couple sure but I'm not fully into it anyway we'll get into that in a minute let's choose the final prompt oh okay that would be perfect a reread there is a book I do want to reread this month so that would be good to come up okay last roll let's go roll number three green a recent purchase so the final prompt is a recent purchase. Now I am filming this the day before I go to Yelk, which is the young adult literature convention. And I'm sure I'm probably gonna purchase books that I'm going to wish that I'd put on this TBR and just waited to film. But I need to get this filmed <laughs> and ready. So we're gonna go with the books that I recently purchased in the last couple months. And I'm gonna go with Salt Slow by Julia Armfield. This is a book I picked up a couple months ago and it's a short story collection and I'm really intrigued by this. This is her debut. So this is a haunting debut collection that explores bodies and the bodily, mapping the skin and bones of her characters through their experiences of isolation, obsession, love and revenge. Teenagers develop ungodly appetites, a city becomes an insomniac and bodies are diligently picked apart to make up better ones. The mundane worlds of schools and sleepy seaside towns are invaded and transformed, creating a landscape which is constantly shifting to hold on to its inhabitants. Sounds really good. So we have blurring the gothic with the everyday. It sounds a little bit like HP Lovecraft-esque, which is something I've come to expect with Julie Armfield. I say that after having only read one other book by hers but I really enjoyed it which is Our Wives Under the Sea and that really did remind me of like HP Lovecraft inspired so I feel like I'm expecting the same sort of things from here and I think a nice short story collection to read slowly across the month will be really good. Don't know how many stories are in this. We have nine short stories but none of them are that long considering this book is under 200 pages. The first one is only 18 pages long so I feel like it's going to be a good time. I'm intrigued to see how it's going to go and I did really like Our Wives Under the Sea. I do want to get a copy of that book. This will be a nice, I feel like a nice break up for the month to read this every so often. Okay, so there we have it. Those are the first selection of books. So we have Sort Slow for a recent purchase. We have Penance for a one word title. And then we have the book for you to choose between for a bright color, which is either Daisy Darker or The Things We Do To Our Friends. So again, let me know in the comments below about these. So let's put those here and let's go for a rummage through my shelves and see what other things we feel like reading in the month of December.
so we've gone for a rummage through the shelves. I have been a little bit more conservative compared to November. I feel like November, we quickly got out of hand. There was no way I was going to read all of those books. And while some of those I would still like to read in this month, I've decided to just go with a smaller selection of books this time. Starting off with the book that I said I do need to reread, and that is Sarah J Maas' A House of Sky and Breath. This is the second book in the Crescent City series, and I love this series. The third book is coming out in January, so of course I have been doing my reread. So yeah, this one has to go on there. I'm definitely going to be getting to it at some point in December. This is an adult urban fantasy series. We have lots of different magical creatures in here, but we're following our main character, Bryce, and she gets pulled into this investigation and has Fallen Angel Hunt helping her with this. And it gets really messy, there's lots of politics involved and yeah it's it's good, it's Sarah J Mars. Is it the best written thing in the planet? No, but I always have a really fun time with them. I don't know, Sarah J Mars just works for me, I've spoken about her so many times on this channel because I read her books as I was growing up so of course I love them. Really excited to do a reread of this, I've only read it the one time I think so I'm looking forward to doing a reread. We're adding that to the definitely pile. Already this is quite a bit because that's a lot of pages but then we have a few other different things so let's just get into it. We have Finley Donovan Knocks Them Dead and this is by Ellie Cosmano and this is the second book in the Finley Donovan series. I loved the first book. The first book is probably going to be on my top books of the year. It was so much fun and it has been a while since I've actually read that one and so I feel like having this for a nice lighter read if I feel like it is a good idea. I am hesitant because I have heard some mixed reviews about this one so in the first book with following Finley Donovan. Now she is a struggling single mother, her ex-husband is a douchebag, and she is a author who is also struggling a little bit to get her books done. And so she goes to her editor and says, you know, I just feel really stuck in a rut, like there's only so many ways I can kill off a person, I'm getting really bored. And somebody overhears this and mistakenly thinks that Finley is a hit woman and leaves her a note with the person's name and what they're willing to pay. And it was great. It's funny. It is hilarious. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. But like I say, I have heard mixed things about this second one. So we'll see if I get on with it. I do want to read it. I think it will be a good time. So we're going to add this one to the TBI. I think this is more of a maybe one, but I feel like it would be fun to break up some of these books with a more light-hearted read. It's, it's a little bit dark over there. So that's in the maybe part. Going back to dark though, we have Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. This was actually on my October TBR, which I never got round to, and I've really been thinking about picking this one up. In the month of November, I've tried reading a different classic book, and I haven't loved it. And I know I love Thomas Hardy, so I'd really like to get back to an author that I really like. And I do enjoy reading classics, especially in winter time. I just think it works really well. So yeah, I would like to read this in December. I would like to put this on the priority but also I do need to be in the mood for a classic book and this one is said to be his most depressing work which Thomas Hardy is no walk in the park anyway but I don't know I love his writing and I think this is going to be a fantastic book so I, I would love to read it in December I would love to do that we're following Jude whose hopes of a university education are lost when he is trapped into marrying the earthly Arabella who later abandons him. Moving to the town of Christminster where he finds work as a stonemason, Jude meets and falls in love with his cousin Sue Bridehead, a sensitive free-thinking new woman, refusing to marry merely for the sake of religious convention. Jude and Sue in decide instead to live together, but they are shunned by society. So this is Hardy's last novel and caused a public fervour when it was first published for its fearless and challenging exploration of class and sexual relationships. I think it's going to be fantastic. So yeah, I would like to try and get to this one if I can. So we'll put that one there. One for the maybe pile, but one that I think I probably should be able to get to is Printer's Devil Court by Susan Hill. This is a ghost story. Susan Hill wrote The Woman in Black. I saw that as a play and I thought it was really good. But I've never heard of this book and this was a charity shop find and so I got it for like four for a pound which was amazing and it's a really short book with illustrations in. I have no idea what this one's about because I've never heard of it but it is just a short little one that I've got on my 
shelves so I thought why not and this is only 105 pages long so it's it's not long at all I feel like I could easily get this done it actually oh this one would have been perfect for November actually it says on a dark November evening at the turn of the century three medical students make an unholy pact for the young Hugh it is the beginning of a nightmare that will pursue him to the grave and perhaps beyond in the cellar of their narrow lodging house in Printer's Devil Court and in a subterranean annex of the hospital, they begin to experiment with the boundaries that separate the living and the dead, witnessing events both extraordinary and terrifying. Years later, when Hugh must return to Printer's Devil Court and face his demons, strange events make clear that his youthful actions have had consequences worse than anything he could have imagined. Oh, that sounds absolutely amazing. Okay, no, we're going to have to put that on the definitely. I'm actually kind of tempted to pick that up now. That sounds so good, and it says November. Maybe, maybe we'll actually read that one as, like, the first book of the month, like, in that in-between stage where I've done my November wrap-up, but December hasn't quite started just yet maybe there. That will be perfect because that's a one evening read. That sounds really good. Okay, so that's a priority. That's moved up the list. Another maybe though, we have Promise Boys by Nick Brooks and this one is one I've had on my TBR for a little while. I picked this one up in Waterstones because it was on a table display of Dark Academia books. This is a young adult Dark Academia and I feel like it's going to be more Dark Academia aesthetic rather than actual Dark Academia. But this one we are following a Urban Promise Prep which is a boys school which Val to turn boys into men but we have three students who are suspects for a murder that's happened and so these three need to take it into their own hands to try and solve this case and find out who actually murdered and I think it was the principal yes the principal Moore ends up murdered and these three boys are at the center of it all it does seem like it will be a fun one I think it's going to be more YA murder mystery rather than dark academia but I feel like it's probably going to have discussions about academia and race so I feel like that's going to be really interesting as well as cultural divide so I think it will be a good one to read um I definitely need to get to it soon I've had this on my TBR for absolutely ages but we're still going to put that on the maybe though because I feel like these books are just yeah the, these ones are really calling to me I think Promise Boys will be good and we'll see I might be in the mood to get to it we'll see we also have Hollow Places by T Kingfisher this was actually on my 23 books to read in 2023 so this is the last month for me to squeeze this into fingers crossed we get to it and this one is interesting. I really like T. Kingfisher, especially her more gothic works. I've just been loving them. been on a bit of a T. Kingfisher binge this year. I've read quite a few and it's just been so good. So we have Kara. Kara finds the words in the mysterious bunker that she's discovered behind a hole in the wall of her uncle's house. Freshly divorced and living back at home, Kara now becomes obsessed with these cryptic words and starts exploring the particular area, only to discover that it holds portals to countless alternate realities. But these places are haunted by creatures that seem to hear thoughts and the more one fears them the stronger they become and the words are pray that they are hungry that sounds really good like that does sound really intriguing do you like portal fantasies and this isn't a long book it, i feel like it's thicker than what it actually is 351 pages long so that's not too bad i would really like to get to it in the month of December but I feel like I may end up pushing it into the new year. We'll see with that one but it does sound really good and I should read it because it's on my 23 to read in 2023 but honestly for that list we haven't done too bad so I'm pretty impressed with that. And then the final book like I said I am actually keeping this pretty conservative. If you saw November's TBR it was out of hand. I had a massive priority then I had a massive stack of maybes and it was a mess and there was no way in hell I was ever going to read them all. So I've been a lot more conservative for December. But the last book I'd like to read is also one that I talked about in October and that is Our Hideous Progeny by C.E. McGill. This is a Frankenstein inspired story. We are following a descendant of Frankenstein. Her and her husband are trying to get into the scientific community. They're struggling. They, they need a breakthrough and the descendant of Frankenstein finds a load of papers that could potentially be the breakthrough they need. Sounds really good. I think some of this takes place in Edinburgh? Is it Edinburgh? Yeah, to the wilds of Scotland. It's set in 1850s London and also Crystal Palace is mentioned which I love Crystal Palace like the dinosaur sculptures there fantastic. We're following Mary who is a descendant of 
Victor Frankenstein, which I love that they use Mary because obviously Mary Shelley created Frankenstein. And I have been on a bit of a Mary Shelley binge. I, I've been reading quite a lot. Actually, have I read loads this year of Mary Shelley's works? I've read Lador by Mary Shelley, which was fantastic. I've read a biography on Mary Shelley, which was really good. So I'd really like to read a book that's been inspired by Mary Shelley's work. I feel like that would be really nice, a nice way to round out the year. So yeah, I, I would like to get to this one soon as well. And I just, I love the end pages of this copy. I think it's absolutely stunning. It's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous book. Um, and I'm really intrigued to see how Frankenstein has influenced this and obviously the secrets and things that they find and discover. I think it's going to be a really good one. And I've not heard too many people talking about this one. I think Danny's read it, but other than that, I haven't heard anyone else talking about it. And I feel like this could be an underhyped book that needs a bit more appreciation. And I won't know unless I try it. I, I really want to put it here. Do we put it there? Let's put it there anyway. How many books is that? That's seven books. That's normally what my TBR ends up being for the month. And then we've got three extra maybes. Now I do also have a load of Kindle books that I would like to get to. I've been really getting into my Kindle book and I like to read those. And one I'm thinking I might prioritise out of my Kindle books at the moment is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride. I think that would be a really nice like eerie gothic book which will go with what I'm feeling like reading. So I'd really like to get to that one, which is this kind of fairy tale-esque thing. We have this woman that's married to this husband and she was happy to marry him, but said to him, if I marry you, you cannot question me about my past. And then of course we start questioning her past and it does seem to be very fairy tale-esque inspired. I've heard different things about this book. Some people really love it, some people don't, but I'm there for the gothic vibe. So if it delivers on that, I'll be very happy. This was an aside. I think I got it for like 99 pence and I would also like to get to a non-fiction book which is will my cat eat my eyeballs and other questions around death so it sounds really fun it's a non-fiction book from a funeral director and all the strange and weird and wonderful things that she gets asked as being a funeral director and I just feel like it'd be a really interesting one to dip in and out of so I'd like to read that non-fiction book as well so there we are there are a couple of the ebooks I want to read you'll have to let me know if going into the new year you would like to know the sort of ebooks that I'm thinking about reading generally with ebooks it's definitely more of a mood based thing if I'm in the mood for it I'm going to pick up this book it's not something I specifically go out of my way to plan but I recently did buy a load of Kindle books because they were 99 pence and those are the two that have been sticking in my mind the most so you'll have to let me know if you'd like to know more about the different Kindle books I have or if you're happy with just the physical ones okay right that's it for this very chatty video I hope you have enjoyed it please do let me know if you've read any of these if you haven't but want to read any of them and also let me know whether I should be reading Daisy Darker or the things we do to our friends in the month of December also let me know what are you planning to read in the month of December but I think that is it for this video so thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far then let's put a what do we put ah a ghost because I do think printers in the double court could be an unexpectedly good book I feel like this has a lot of potential so yeah let's put a ghost for that book and we're gonna leave it there so thank you so much for watching I hope you have enjoyed this video please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment if you enjoyed it. Those three things really help this channel grow so thank you so much. Yeah okay I'm gonna go otherwise I'm just gonna keep rambling at you. My social media links, anyone I've mentioned will all be linked below and I will of course catch you in the very next video.